Okay, welcome to our Science Foundations unit. This is your Concept One Notes on Lab Basics. We are gonna be spending a lot of time doing labs together this year, so it's very important that you know how to act appropriately in lab so that we can stay safe and you can actually learn from the lab what it is you're supposed to learn. So most of what of these lab basics we're gonna be learning by doing, actually walking through activities, labs, et cetera, together. But there are a few things I wanna make sure we touch on, particularly the safety things, before we go any further. So if we were in class right now, I'd be having you guess these general guidelines by looking at the pictures. But for the sake of the video, we're just gonna kind of blitz through them. Okay, so first and foremost, always read through the lab all the way before doing anything else. You should be reading to understand, to figure out what questions you have before we get started. It, when in doubt in lab, read the lab, ask questions of your group first before coming up to me. Um, almost everything will be covered in the lab if you just look there first, okay? Next is you have to be sure to keep your lab table or your desk or what, wherever it is you're working it's got to stay neat and organized because it's so easy to just, you know, bump something and then all of a sudden you knocked over a test tube and you spilled or broken something and then we've got a whole other issue. So I really recommend typically not even having your full binder out if you're working where you're working, just pull out the lab pages you need, you know, never any food or drink or anything like that. Only the bare minimum that we need so that you can focus on the lab at hand and, you know, accidents happen, but a lot of accidents are very preventable. So we're going to tr try to work together to prevent those. Now, in case of an emergency, like you do spill something, you do crack something, always tell the teacher, always tell me before you do anything else, okay? No matter how minor you might think it is, like, oh, this isn't a big deal, I can just wipe it up, I want to know. And if you're listening and I'm not your teacher, I know that your teacher wants to know because oftentimes you may think something's not a big deal, but there's a, and it may not be, but there is a certain way that different chemicals and things have to be disposed of. You know, broken glass cannot just go in the trash can uh, because then it'll tear the bag and then you have trash everywhere. So we have a broken glass disposal. Like there are different rules for how we clean up things in lab and maybe you got some on your hands. So I need to make sure that you wash your hands appropriately. So if something happens, any sort of accident, whatever, always tell the teacher. Now you have to take lab seriously. Okay. No goofing around. We're never going to be drinking and tasting anything, pretending th thermometers are straws. We're not going to pretend any of the lab equipment is anything other than what it is. Okay. So Absolutely no goofing around. You will not be allowed to stay in lab if I can't trust you to be in the lab safely. Now, when in doubt, ask. Like, yes, I said, read the lab, you know, ask someone in your group, that kind of thing. But if you are still concerned, like ask me a question, I want to help you and I want you to learn from this. I don't want to just like go through the motions and check the boxes. I really want you to understand. That's the point of doing labs is to do science and really understand it. So please ask questions, especially if it comes to like handling a chemical or anything like that. If you can't remember how to do it, I want to help you. All right. Let's talk about some important safety equipment that you will need in different scenarios. So safety goggles, we're always going to wear um, when we're using chemicals or there's fire. That's going to protect your eyes. I know you don't want to get the marks on your face. Like I get that. I was in high school science too at one point in my life and we we would put try to put paper towels like underneath the goggles so they wouldn't leave marks on us and um, our teachers all thought we were ridiculous. So I promise you, like it is better to do this. It's going to be more embarrassing if you have to use the safety eye wash and you, your whole face gets soaking wet. Okay. So wear your safety goggles and these stay on even when we're cleaning up. We don't take these off until you're like back at your desk with not a chemical in sight. Okay. Uh, lab apron. This is what we wear to protect our clothing from chemicals or anything else that we may be working with. And then heat resistant gloves are important too. If we're using hot objects, we're going to wear these um, so that you don't burn yourself. We obviously have tongs and other things to touch hot objects, but these gloves are great. We also just have, um, you know, non latex kind of gloves that can be worn as well, but those are not heat resistant. So each lab, I will make sure you have what you need to do the lab safely. What's important here is that you wear the things when they're given to you, okay? Now, fire, let's talk about it. And you might be like, this will never happen. I felt that same way in my first year teaching, we had a small fire in lab. So I'm just telling you, accidents happen. Okay, so let's talk about how we would handle this. First of all, there's so many ways to prevent fires, okay? 
first, you should never walk away from an open flame or a plugged in hot plate. Okay, so anytime we're using heat of any source, we're just not going to leave it unattended. We are going to stay there and make sure we're by it. Especially, I, I mean, the flame feels obvious because it's a fire, but I think with the hot plate too, we forget that like some people may not realize it's on and then, you know, you walk away and someone, you're not standing there to block it. Someone accidentally brushes against it, touches it, they get burned. Or, you know, you might have something on that hot plate and if you look away for one minute, it can boil over. So we really are going to always stay near those things. We're going to keep our hair tied back when we are working in lab. One of the biggest ways that we have fire issues is when hair gets close to flames or hot things and it catches on fire because you're bending over. Same with like loose clothing or if you have like long necklaces or jewelry of any kind in lab, those are, we're not going to wear those. Um, and those are really simple ways to prevent fires. Also, if you're using a Bunsen burner, we always want to make sure that uh, it is connected to the gas line correctly um, because if that's not the case, you know, that can cause issues too. So we're going to be really, really cautious when it comes to fires. Now, if for some reason a fire does happen, okay, a fire extinguisher can be used to put out fires. Um, um, this is a great time to look around your classroom and see where one is located. And how you use a fire extinguisher is um, there's an acronym called PASS. So you pull the little um, notch at the top to kind of um, unlock it, if you will. You'll see it on your fire extinguisher. You aim it wherever the fire is. You squeeze the handle and then you do a sweeping motion to cover uh, the flame. So pull, aim, squeeze, sweep. Now, if possible, uh, I prefer to use a fire blanket, especially if a person is on fire, uh, because then you're not getting sprayed with chemicals. If you get sprayed with a fire extinguisher, then you're going to have to go get in the safety shower next. So fire blanket is great because you can literally throw it on top of someone, throw it on top of a small fire and kind of stomp it out. Now, let's talk more about chemicals here. I mentioned earlier, n we're never going to eat or drink in lab, um, even in our just classroom, because we do labs in our classroom. So even when it's not lab day, you, someone in the period before you or the period after you might be doing labs, and there may have been chemicals on the desk. So it's just not safe to eat in science class. I'm sorry, and I know you hate it, but we just, we can't do it. Also, you should never taste a chemical, ever. It's not funny, never a good idea. Um, if you're smelling any chemical, you have to waft it. I will show you how to do this in person. You never just want to like go and take a big whiff of it, okay? That can burn the inside of your nose. Um, like I said earlier, we'll wear gloves when we're handling toxic chemicals, like non-latex um, kind of, you know, rubbery gloves. And then always, always, always dispose of chemicals correctly. Never just pour something down the sink, ever, ever, ever. Always ask. Most chemicals, we're going to have a special way that we're going to dispose of them safely. And down the sink is not that way. And like I said earlier, if you spill something, just tell the teacher so we can help you get it cleaned up. If you get a chemical on yourself, uh, we'll, we'll have to use the eye wash or the safety shower. Some people call it the chemical shower. That's a full body situation. And you have to use it for like 15 minutes. So this is not uh, something we want to just mess around and, and do for fun. So this is a big deal. And hopefully we won't need any of that uh, this year. But if we do, um, it's a good time now to look around and locate where those safety objects are in the classroom. Okay, a few things about glassware. And then we're going to wrap this up and actually experience uh, walking through using any of these things and knowing where stuff is in the classroom. I know this sounds so simple, you guys, but hot glass looks just like cold glass. So don't ever just grab a beaker. Like you may not realize it's hot. And then what do you think you do if you touch something hot? You drop it and then it shatters and then we're dealing with broken glass. Okay, so always be careful. Always use safety equipment to handle. Like you see in this picture, she's using um, beaker tongs to pick it up. That's a great idea. Now, broken class always has to go in a special disposal. It does not go in the trash can because then it rips the bag. So let me know. Also, if you see cracked glassware, let me know before you use it. I will find other glassware for you because um, cracked glassware gets heated. It will then shatter. Um, and also, it might be cracked and it could leak out the chemical. So we just keep an eye out for cracked, especially around the top of like test tube li um, li like lips around the top of it. That'd be important to know. 
And then lastly, it is always best if you wear closed-toed shoes and long pants. That is the safest attire always for working in lab because it's going to protect you from any dropped anything dropping anything sharp, any glass or shattering, um, just exposing your skin to anything uh, it shouldn't be exposed to. So. Those are all um, the main things that you really need to know. And so now we're going to just kind of practice uh, together uh, looking at some things in our classroom. We're going to do some stations. Uh, we're going to look at some different scenarios. And then we're also going to explore lab equipment together. Now, what we learn in these stations is important. I just didn't want to do notes on it because... Uh, we don't need to make these notes longer than they need to be. I'm all about the shortest notes possible, as you'll hopefully see uh, throughout this course. So we're, the lab notes we're going to take on equipment are going to be through the form of stations, but what you write there matters. So we're going to treat that as notes when we're reviewing for assessments and all of that. Okay, so I'll see you in class for some of these activities.